All right. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Hope everybody's morning's d going well so far. And thanks for joining me as I dig through what's currently on offer at uh, Canadian retailers in terms of uh, computer, tablets, and smartphones. And as usual, I start my search in the morning with uh, what's been most popular recently. So currently going through what my uh, visitor has been looking at. And I'm just going to uh, get my data all fresh and updated for everybody. So if it's the uh, perfect occasion, if you uh, wanted to, uh, if you had some questions, you plan to go shopping this weekend for a new, uh, for a new piece of tech for work or for entertainment, feel free to ask and uh, I'll see what I, how I can help you. Yeah, and this laptop right here is one I usually refer to as having a large print screen. And the reason for that is that not only is it a 17 inch monitor to start up with, it's also a relatively low resolution one. So uh, things will naturally look bigger on that one. So if you're tired of squinting at small screens and stuff like that, this laptop, even though it's really it's not a fast one it's not going to break any sp uh, speed limits or anything like that but if one of your main discomfort at the, at the computer these days have been having to squint at a small screen that might be the one for you and it's available t at quite a few places as well So it's actually one of the favorites on my site. <laughs> the one is, yeah, the source has it online only. And as, as I go through the different places where that laptop can be bought from, behind me, you're seeing um, the screen alternate between, um, it's the uh, s sort of an overview of what that computer is capable of, where you can buy it, its price history and all of that. And the other screen basically tells you what kind of, performance you can expect from that device, what uh, program is going to run and how well. So as you see, it's a lot of one star rating, which is not terrible, actually. One star means that uh, it meets the minimal requirements. If you're uh, spending a lot of time in a specific piece of software you probably want to try to reach um, three star level five stars for compatibility is uh, indicative of you're doing something most people wouldn't do hey Kim how are you nice to sh see you this morning Thanks for all the retweets, which reminds me, I'm probably going to put that on silent. There we go. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Same here. <laughs> 
This streaming schedule is a little brutal. <laughs> hey guys. Sometimes you can't see a corgi bag just going at the corner of my webcam there. Me streaming is a very strange thing to them. But yeah, it's kind of the kind of stream I have to do. Try to always be streaming as early as I can. That way I can be available when people are starting to plan their uh, weekend shopping. And my target on Fridays is to try to get my newsletter out by noon. So that uh, people at work can have something to read during their lunch break. So that forces me to be a little bit more of a morning person that would that I would normally be. And hopefully I don't sound too congested. I was a little, uh, I feel a little stuffed up this morning. But yeah, basically doing my data entry, there's a lot of downtime during that period. So uh, yeah, the whole idea of this, show, this live stream is that way I, it's the perfect opportunity for anyone to ask questions because I've got plenty of time to answer those. It's also the reason why I'm not sharing my screen like most streamer on, on Twitch, uh, because you would be looking at a lot of websites just loading in all the time. So it's a lot of, it's quite a different idea from what we see usually. And thanks a lot for the feedback. Appreciate that. Always a little tricky when you start streaming, you're not necessarily used to hearing your own voice. <laughs> So it's a little hard to be um, objective about it. All right, that. All right, finally going to a different device. <laughs> that HP 17 inch laptop, it's available from a lot of different places and yeah, it's one of the devices getting the most views on my site right now. So at least that way people know what they're in for. Or at least that's my goal. gaming laptop this one yeah out of stock over at microbytes that's a smaller retailer in the uh, Montreal region used to buy my computers from there back when I lived in Montreal first computer I bought with my money I bought from there actually I found the receipt the other day <laughs> That was such a blast from the past. I just finished studying at uh, the NAD Center in Montreal. So uh, being able to run Windows NT on it was 
uh, a little bit of a requirement because I just had learned to use Softimage 3D and that would not run on other kinds of windows. That was either Windows NT4 or that was uh, a Linux ba uh, Unix based system like those uh, SGI system. And yeah, those uh, silicon graphics workstation were way too expensive for me. So at least NT4 was uh, able to run soft image if I needed to. I don't think I ever managed that. Obviously, there's no way a student fresh out of school could be a it could afford soft image treaty especially back then right Yeah, MacBook Pro just marked for a random checkup. And that's my wife leaving. <laughs> One of my dog has a little bit of a, a fit whenever she leaves. <laughs> So it's up at the Apple Store online and on location as well. MacBook Pros, which can be worth the investment for someone that really needs a portable workstation. They have pretty good battery life. I know that in your case, Cam, you... Uh, you had a MacBook Air recently. Do you still have it, by the way? Always curious hearing about how people are... How people are... How would I say? The long-term experience of having a specific computer sometimes. Always... I find the uh, MacBook Air a little harder to recommend. Ah, uh, yeah, the MSI Vortex. Pretty uncommon gaming rig there. Wouldn't be my pick personally, but to someone looking for a compact machine, maybe take your gaming to the living room, might be worth the extra money then. Otherwise, yeah, it's a very expensive piece of, so uh, piece of hardware. Speaking of expensive, the, the Surface Studio is pretty much in the same category there. It's very attractive to someone who needs, a, how would I say, a drawing surface. So for art and stuff like that, it's really attractive. It's just that you could probably get a Cintiq in a tower for the same price. So you really need to... Be, uh, be ready to invest into having that uh, sleek, space-saving kind of device instead of having the uh, modular tower and the Cintiq and all that. You kind of lose on uh, ease of maintenance and upgrades and doing that, however.
Yeah, that one has been picked for a random review as well. Usually prefer my uh, computer accessories are as inexpensive as possible, especially laptop bags. And the Amazon basic ones so far, they're serving me pretty well. Fairly well built for the price. And yeah, they've got all the padding they need to uh, keep your laptop safe. So uh, right now that's what I'm using. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. And that's my cat. She's pretty vocal. Still hangs just off the camera. <laughs> Cap tree is behind my computer, so sometimes she goes up there. Now I've got a cat toy on an arm up there too, <laughs> so I can actually play with her while I work. Alright, 454. Yeah, for a 4K monitor with FreeSync, that's a pretty good price for that. Don't usually invest that much in a screen myself, but I hear a really good thing about FreeSync overall. That way, even if you don't have the most expensive uh, GPU out there, you can still get uh, relatively smooth frame rates in your game don't uh, need to push as close uh, well you don't need to push to 60 as much high uh, here when you uh, with a free sync kind of setup because you don't get the tearing as much and because the screen syncs to whatever frame rate your gpu outputs you don't get those weird uneven frame rates when they get to your screen. Yeah, or uh, still available online only at Microsoft anyway. Guessing Joker is going to stream more uh, battle tech tonight. Must admit, I wasn't looking forward to that game so much, but looking at the stream yesterday, I, w I started warming up to the game. Right. The monitor is still available. Yeah, online only at Walmart. And yeah, it can be one of the confusing thing when shopping online, but we're on retail stores websites more and more they're going to be uh, available on the website only 
often the uh, brick and mortar and the online stores are different businesses all together. Walmart kind of mixes the two a little. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, the Battletech crowd has been starving for a game for a long time and uh, I wasn't necessarily looking forward to a turn-based strategy, but it's got enough of an XCOM vibe and they seem to have sped up the animation between turns, which is a little bit of a pet peeve of mine. Used to work on games which relied so much on cutscenes that now I've got very little tolerance for them. <laughs> So the more time is spent on displaying animations and graphics and stuff like that, the more I my patience run out. <laughs> but they seem to have tuned that tuned that to a pretty good level I found. And the whole mercenary company management, I wasn't expecting them to go that far into it. I was expecting more of a mech commander. What we got, I find, feels a little bit more like XCOM, even though I know Joker said that uh, to, to him it was apple and oranges. From a watcher's perspective, that's, uh, that's how it felt. And, and I am always a little careful on my channel not to hype things too much. My role in someone's shopping process is to... Uh, it's basically the moment before you buy and you're so excited, but then you've got a little doubt and you want to make sure you're not making a mistake. So I start with the assumption that uh, you are hyped enough. I'm not going to try to uh, get people hyped even more than they are and try to uh, basically uh, hype them into a sale necessarily. All right, so I've got the popular stuff out of the way. So let's see what's currently trending. I'll try to not spam people on my social network accounts too much and find something I haven't reported about lately. <laughs> that, I think, was my cat trying to force her way into our ball. And start training, and I briefly tried to train the dog to uh, chase her away when she did that. Sadly, now what I get is uh, a lot of barking. <laughs> Whenever the cat does something, I start barking and run at it. Ah, oh, hello. So maybe that wasn't the uh, wisest decision on my part. All right, so that HP 15 inch laptop is Apparently the most popular device, almost by twice as much. But I reported about it really recently. The good thing, however, is the Fire HD tablet is back in stock. After a few weeks out, and it's the uh, second most popular device on my site, so 
going to be happy to post that as the uh, trending device for today. God, I was a little hesitant with the uh, Fire HD8. Wasn't sure that uh, a tablet that cheap would actually be worth recommending. So I bought it for myself and uh, gave it a try. Actually, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, what I'm doing with that tablet is mostly um, extend the battery life from my uh, smartphone. So instead of watching movies on it, I watch it on the tablet instead. And it's been doing that fairly well. Only concern with the Fire HD 8 is that uh, it doesn't have access to the um, Google App Store. So it's going through Amazon's instead. And uh, every Google app, uh, official Google app is not available on it. Which means that, uh, yeah, for YouTube, I have to go through a third party app, which has basic functionality, but doesn't go further than that. So it's just a notch up from just using the, um, a web browser to go on YouTube on the tablet. It solved a few of the issues with it, like video volume was very bad and all of that, but... Uh, uh, with the app, it solves that kind of stuff. Just, yeah. I sometimes wish I had the real deal instead of uh, going through that little app instead. But yeah, for um, Netflix, uh, Amazon Prime videos, and uh, Twitch, it works perfectly for those. And yeah, battery life is pretty great too. So yeah, for 100 bucks, solves most of the issues you get with a cheap tablet in that you get the security upgrades. If you're a little adventurous, you can sideload the um, Google App Store on it. But uh, I hear that most of the time that... Uh, prevents you from getting updates from Amazon after that. So uh, you stop getting updates, security updates and all of that. So uh, yeah, a little bit of a security concern there. Certified open box over at Best Buy. I'm seeing a lot of prices go up at Best Buy so far this morning. Still waiting to see where where price uh, where they will cut on prices this weekend because I didn't receive a flyer from them this week. So I've got a little bit less information than usual on the uh, Best Buy sales this weekend. Price rise on this one as well. No change on this one. And I know there's a few Omen gaming PCs that actually compare very well. And that come up every once in a while, but uh, I don't think that model ever got at the sweet spot where I would recommend that. one of the things that makes reviewing factory build system a little tricky. Most, of, most reviewers just base themselves on the MSRP, but 
I don't think most people buy factory made devices at the MSRP. Usually buy it when it's on sale. So uh, in those cases, criticisms like it's not worth the money they ask for, you could buy this other device for the same price, starts to becoming invalid. That's why I spend so much time keeping on, uh, keeping tabs on how much a device sells for. My process starts with what is currently available in stores, and then I then I do some kind of a I use the specs to calculate what a computer is capable of so I can actually cover what is actually in stores. Because yeah, that was one of my pet peeves when I started this site. Every time I would get to watch a review and get really convinced that I wanted to buy something, I would tr realize tr uh, shortly afterwards that uh, that device would never be available, be even on sale in Canada. And if I were to, let's say, import that from the United States, I would either not have access to the server that would make it work, or I would even... Um, just the import charges in some case would basically make it not worth the investment at all. So that's why I've... It, it might sound weird to do a local-ish kind of channel in 2018, but that's the reason why. All right, Kimojo. Have a great day and good luck with the errands. And thank you very much for coming by. I really appreciate the company. It's always nice to have uh, someone to talk to during those because that's the main reason why I do the stream. Just have a chance to, uh, well, it's open office hours, essentially. It's a time where I'm available for questions and stuff like that. While I do my morning updates. All right. I recommended that mouse last week. I think most of the rebates on it are gone at this point, however. Can definitely see the price came up since last time I recommended it. All right, 450 online only on Galaxy Tab S2. I'm really look I really hope we're going to see more Android tablets at some point. Right now I think the most recent Android powered tablet is maybe three or four years old. So it's starting to be a little bit of a concern to me, honestly. Apple has been uh, leading the way on tablets and um well, I'm not a fan of the uh, walled garden apples keeping around their devices. Much prefer how uh, open the uh, Android architecture is. And sure, the uh, App Store is mostly composed of uh, apps which are almost mal malware. But I honestly don't find the iOS store to be... It's slightly better, but not that much. Kind of... Uh, 
I want to say the typical behavior of a mobile app are not the most respectful of your privacy, let's say. And uh, Apple's not much better than Android on that front. Their rights management is a bit better. Uh, but they're still tricky for a lot of things. Most apps on mobile stores really are web browsers. They mostly, at the beginning, they came from the fact that um, a lot of websites were still using Flash and stuff like that for presentation and such. So they had to make their own app to browse the website because the website would not be compatible with iOS devices, which refuse to run Flash. So at first it was like that, then they realized that uh, an app is able to tell you so much about a user with relatively little user input. Browsers are a little bit more transparent when a site you visit try to get specific um, data about you, like GPS position and that sort of thing. An app can just get it most of the time because most people don't read what permission an app is asking for. And I mean, it's... It's so hard these days even to, let's say, find a solitaire card game that doesn't require your GPS positioning and constant online access just to be able to play a card game. So yeah, the mobile landscape in terms of privacy is a little bit of a landmine, really. Minefield? Yeah, better term. <laughs> All right, ten dollar price drop on that monitor. Still nothing really impressive going on at Best Buy so far. All right, they don't have that monitor anymore. They do have that Mac Mini, but regular pricing on this one. Sadly, Mac Mini at this point is probably one of the most upgradable Apple device out there. Although I hear they're soldering more and more stuff even in the Mac Mini at this point. Which always makes me sad. I understand the need to make a tablet, for instance, as compact as possible. Uh, but for a device that is not even portable, for something that is essentially a box on your desk or next to your TV, then I feel that, yeah, just having a little bit of extra space so that I can have a port in there where I can put memory in or out as I need, for instance, uh, that's always a big plus, especially at the price Apple sells RAM. So, yeah. I'm a little disappointed with Apple these days. Used to be a big fan of theirs. But I guess it's a cycle. It's the cycle me and Apple go through. Start using them. Actually, that's probably the computer I learned IT with. That was a power PC. 
Power Mac 1200, if I remember right. So that's even before the uh, G3, G4 and all of that they went through. But they were during their power period. Because back then for graphic design, apples were a big plus. Not as it's not true anymore. Back then, you could run the uh, Adobe Creative Suite on a PC, but they were created on Mac first and then ported over. And performance on Macs for the Adobe Creative Suite was always better. Not that we called it the Creative Suite back then, but. Um, That's just me showing my age, I guess. <laughs> yeah, nowadays Adobe works the other way, way around. It's PC first, Mac second. Although I remember preferring the uh, UI on Max back then a little bit more. The multi-window thing with floating toolbars and all that worked better on uh, Mac, but I think they even ported that behavior to the Mac now, where you have all your toolbar inside the window instead of having separate windows for everything. So that's no longer there either. Yeah, Ten dollar price drop. That's always an option. Still doesn't compare to New Egg, but that one's refurbished. Uh, Amazon still beats Best Buy price by quite a little bit. No change there. And yeah, usually on Fridays I start with a listing from Best Buy. Simply because that's, uh, that's the time of the week where most of their uh, rebates kick in. And I mostly operate on uh, live data. I don't necessarily go by the flyers or at least I don't trust them entirely. I use them to forecast where, which kind of, which device I should probably cover. But the thing is, the um, well, if you shop for long enough, you probably know this already. But uh, yeah, advertised deals are not always ad as advertised. One thing I see Best Buy do quite a bit <clears throat> is uh, often prices are going to be better on Friday than Saturdays. Because for some reason, they drop the price by quite a bit on Friday. Then when Saturday comes, the price come up maybe by 10 or 20 bucks. So in a few cases, you might not want to wait for the weekend to go shop there. Always depends. 10 bucks is not always a difference worth fussing over. But yeah, if you've got an opportunity to go there on Friday instead of going there on Saturday, sometimes it's worth uh, it's worth doing that. Well, price just pretty much doubled on that speaker set over at Best Buy. And on these slides, I only display the um, 
for best prices for every device. So, um, yeah, if you, uh, even though I'm reviewing the offers from Best Buy right now, Best Buy might not show in the list, especially when there's lots of options in there. But Best Buy is becoming the favorite for that specific webcam. And that's one I personally have. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty interesting one. It's not what I'm using for the stream. Uh, but uh, I like that webcam quite a bit. There is no drivers required. You just plug it in and it works. And that's something you don't see a lot in webcam nowadays. And uh, yeah, it's got uh, autofocus and exposure adjustment right, right in that little device. And if you're in the kind of situation where you do uh, video conferencing with it's it's built for a conference room, small one granted, but uh, still it's uh, meant to pick up voices from let's say a table full of people. So that webcam is uh, pretty well suited for anyone that uh, let's say starts a video uh, a video chat at Christmas, for instance, with uh, the whole family or something like that. If you sometimes do a group conference, but all around the same computer, that webcam performs a little bit better than most. Because it's got a microphone adapted to that situation. It's also got a wide, uh, wide angle uh, lens on it. I hear quite a few people use it for streaming too. But I don't know. Whenever I would... <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, whenever I would use it for uh, video chats, uh, the autofocus was not the best. It's kind of the downside of having a device that does all the, that basically manages its own settings. Then you can't, uh, then the computer can't help. So you don't have um, face tracking or anything like that that helps set the proper focus. So, let's buy. Still have this one, but it's a refurbished, and they sell their refurbished stuff online only, as usual. All right, it's available a little bit everywhere. Yeah, pretty cost effective for the kind of sound quality you get out of those. No, they're not. Definitely not mind blowing in terms of audio quality, but um, for how, given how small they are and the uh, the fact that they cost twenty bucks, it's not too bad. It's a good starting point. Let's say it's uh, probably good enough for what you do most of the time and then maybe you can put a fancy pair of headset for gaming and uh, stuff like that. That's usually the more cost effective way to get high end results. Which is someone I really want to start covering soon. Headsets. I've got speakers, but no headsets yet. I 
Let's see. Right. Yeah, I'll have uh, the... Uh, I'm waiting for delivery this morning. It's probably going to happen in a few minutes. The, that uh, delivery guy usually come around this time of the day. And I got a confirmation email saying that he's coming. So, probably won't be long. We'll have to dash out really quick. So, apologize in advance for that. Just keep an eye out for him. All right. Still online only on Microsoft Surface. Yeah, really nice looking device. Functionality is pretty impressive. If you need a good looking compact hard studio, that's a pretty good pick, even though it's an expensive one. But for some people, it's worth investing into. All in one from Dell. Those speakers must look really interesting. But yeah, not necessarily what I would call a very good pick for let's say gaming or anything like that i don't think it's got the power for that and yeah all in ones i feel are often a better choice than laptops especially the 17 inch ones which let's face it are not going to leave the desk very often they live a little longer because they're not bumped around so much and you have a much better screen for the price too and better speakers um, but otherwise they're pretty similar to laptops so you are you are really limited in terms of what kind of upgrades you can do to it and for gaming i find that that's one of the big factor if you can't upgrade your device the longest it's going to stay well at its current performance level is roughly three years which not terrible by today's standards a lot of people change computers at that rate <clears throat> goes a little expensive over time but uh, that's that's not unexpected but the thing is you spend so much money on a gaming system usually prefer uh, to have the option to uh, swap the graphics card maybe three year down the line and uh, have a computer that lasts me a lot longer I'll need to see what the age is on my current computer. I think it's 10 years old at this point, but I'm not 100% sure.
And of course, if you've got any question about, well, your shopping options for the weekend might be related to uh, what's currently going on behind me, or even if you spotted something that sounds like a good deal to you, and you want a sounding board to uh, basically let you uh, help you figure out if it's a good deal or not, let me know by email. All means. I'm a better source of information for our Canadians because I know the pricing here. I know, for instance, in the US, usually price of technology is much better. And uh, of course, the uh, money ex exchange rate is a part of that, but there's also import charges and all uh, uh, custom fees and all that kind of stuff. So it's not a straight comparison, even with just keeping the exchange rate in mind. But I can still help you figure out what's going to run on it or not. Maybe even find a close relative that we have in, uh, in here that's available in your market. All right, that one is online only over at Best Buy. So eight hundred on this one. And we have a price drop on this refurbished all in one. So under one thousand. So uh yeah, not a bad pick for, let's say, a bedroom or a room where I really like having a computer in is the kitchen. And one of the things all-in-ones are really good at is, uh, yeah, the kitchen area. Because most of them don't have any electronics in the base. So if there's a spill or anything like that, well, you're not going to ruin the perfectly good laptop, for instance. And yeah, kitchen, kind of a central location in house. Uh, depends, of course, how much time you spend in there. But I know we spend a lot of time here. Um, and since it's so central, it's kind of a good place to uh, get notification about, you know, email, social media and being able to access recipes uh, either in, turn, uh, in blog or even video format, it's uh, kind of a plus. Yeah, online only on that screen. And another refurbished all-in-one. This one quite a bit cheaper. It's going to be, it's 700. Just basic functionality for, let's say, Fortnite. But uh, yeah, for everyday uh, computer needs, it's not a bad pick. Yeah, not bad at all, actually, for 700. And certified refurbished, usually those things are uh, pretty reliable. Price got up a little bit on that one. 
not a big change. So yeah, the way I track rebates has a lot to do with pricing history. That's the blue graph you see under the product picture there. And that's how I tell you if something's on sale or not. And that's also how I spot those fake rebates. Like it's pretty common for many retailers to have devices which are actually more often at a rebated price than on what they call regular price. So, uh, yeah, my system sees through that. So instead of, uh, don't always believe when uh, a flyer tells you that, uh, yeah, you could save $200 or something. Sometimes it's just a regular price. It's just that some, most of the time it's a little overpriced. But yeah, I guess it's, there's always that tale from, uh, what is, uh, what retailer was it? JCPenney or, yeah, I don't remember exactly the name, but essentially one of the big retailers in the US at some point decided to uh, essentially be a little bit more transparent with their consumers. And instead of having, you know, like 60, uh, 699 and 99 cents, they would label it as, well, it's 700. A little bit like I'm doing, actually. They would also stop displaying products on sale as uh, as rebated when they were at what even the main branch considered the regular price. So you would get basically no sales, uh, transparent pricing, and all of that. But what they soon discovered is that the way people shop often, um, essentially the emotional reward for getting a rebate was well, people preferred having a fake deal and feel great about it because that felt like an actual reward than buying it at a regular price even though the price tag in both cases would be exactly the same so shopping is as some kind of a role as a reward system in our society and um yeah that's why you see all those uh fake rebates going around it's just so you can feel good about getting a great deal you know whether it is the case or not it's something i personally cut through because as I said earlier, my role is not to hype you into um, into making a purchase. I assume you're already hyped enough. So yeah, I assume that people come to me when they're about to press the buy button. And they just want to be... They just have some kind of doubt and just want to know, okay, I feel this way about this purchase, but am I right? Which is one of the reasons that, uh, yeah, 
I replicate that uh, GCPenney behavior a little bit. So for instance, this uh, Omen gaming system, most place on my website, you will see that, yeah, it's for sale for three grand. Not 2,999.99 cents. I will give you that price in the detailed views, but uh, yeah, in most of the overview stuff, I'm just going to round it up. And funny enough, in this specific case, the reason why you don't see Best Buy in the list is that everybody else is selling it, is selling this MacBook Pro for $2,399. Best Buy decided to add 99 cents at the end. And the reason is, is that from an emotional standpoint, it's the same price. 99 cents makes no difference in most people's finances nowadays. So, uh, yeah, saving 99 cents on the MacBook, that's a uh, very minimal kind of um, benefit to anyone. The emotional response to getting the 99 and the 999 prices is... Uh, Pretty much zero. So they just added uh, they added an extra buck on there. Simply because as long as it's under that psychological barrier of three grand, it's the same price. As long as you don't say it's three grand. Right, that one's still out of stock. Yeah, and that's one other frustration I try to save my viewers. Um, seeing a price drop somewhere, but uh, then you get to uh, the store and yeah, it's out of stock already. Happens pretty quick sometimes. I don't see that happen as often anymore, especially not in tech. But uh, yeah, every once in a while that still happens. Ah, oh, yeah, and here's another thing. Currently reviewing a listing for that gaming laptop. And yeah, it's on Best Buy website, but the uh, seller is actually Mike's computer shop. So sometimes what you see on Best Buy's website is not sold by them. They're starting to act more like... They're behaving more and more like eBay and uh, Amazon to some extent, on their website at least. And last time I visited Best Buy, there wasn't that much stuff in the stores either. A lot of retailers are, well, brick and mortar experiences getting closer and closer to... Uh, what I would call the Apple Store experience. Where there's no shelves or anything like that, really, you just talk to a clerk and they're going to pick up the uh, what you want from the uh, back room instead. 
and I'm not against that. But it takes away a little bit from the experience of going in store for shopping instead of buying online, you know. Sometimes you can see what you're looking for, but uh, there's fewer and fewer things to look at. Or at least, it's been my experience so far. And that's mostly big retailers too. Smaller retailers don't follow trends that eagerly, usually. Guess smaller stores don't have to pretend as much in order to uh, deliver the uh, boutique experience either. All right, still 700 on this tablet. And best, price, uh, best Buy is ranking fairly well on that one. Yeah, and just another alternative there. Yeah, sometimes different colors are listed as different products altogether. Other time they're just variants on the same model. Kind of depends on the manufacturer and how they distribute their stuff. All right, iPad Pro, currently available online only. Well, in this variant, anyway. You know what, I'll take a quick bio break, I'll leave you with uh, the top picks sorted by archetypes, and I'll be right back.
All right, and I'm back. All right. Blackberry key one. One of the very few options you would have right now to um, have a physical keyboard on your smartphone. Most people don't benefit from that. Uh, and a lot of people are so used to the virtual keyboard anyway that, uh, yeah, there's no speed increase usually. Uh, where the big difference lies for physical keyboards, you can touch type on those. So you don't actually need to look at your screen in order to uh, put text messages and stuff like that in there. So for a few people, a physical keyboard is still a big deal today. It's very slight price drop on that um, Chromebook there. Chromebooks are, I feel, one of the better investments in the $300 range for a computer. There, there's alternative running Windows, and sure, they're going to be more versatile. But the thing I feel is that uh, the Windows computer is going to be able to do more but it's going to perform poorly at everything it does. While the uh, Chromebook is going to... It's going to satisfy a lot of needs. There's a lot of thing you can do just on the web t these days. So, and obviously you've got social media, video streaming, free games, all that, uh, all those things are well covered already just with the web. And there's some amazing app for video, uh, photo editing, video editing, even music and sound editing sometimes. And they're probably not going to be top tier stuff. And a lot of them are going to be freemium, but... Um, Sometimes for the portability, it's uh, not necessarily a bad option. So yeah, the big difference between a $300 Chromebook and a $300 uh, netbook running Windows, let's say, is that um, nothing on the Windows machine at that price point is going to be enjoyable. If you're uh, already frustrated with technology to start up with, a $300 mach uh, Windows machine is not going to change your mind at all. It's going to reinforce the, uh, the uh, incomfort you already experience. Chromebook on the other end, sure, it's not the most versatile thing, but it actually covers the most common needs for most people. And it's going to do that task fairly well. So yeah, you got a better chance of enjoying your time in a Chromebook at that price point, in my opinion, than on a similarly priced Windows machine. But if what you need is to is options, Windows machine, yeah, is going to be the Chromebook there. It's just, yeah, not going to be a fun time. All 
right. iPad is out of stock at London Drugs. Well, this variant anyway. I might have a few more in there. And yes, I am looking at uh, computers stuck at a drugstore. And the um, reasons for that is that uh, sure, London Drugs has your plaster and uh, mouthwash and all that kind of stuff. But their uh, technology department is not too bad. Uh, they have a pretty serious photography department and the uh, places where they have a computer shop well so far i've heard pretty good things about them so i keep tabs on them actually it's kind of the exception i haven't seen another drugstore where i would yeah you might want to buy a computer for there no <laughs> it's 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 uh the exception to the rule let's say And every once in a while, yeah, they have uh, they have valid deal going on, so I do keep tabs on them. Yeah, that one is now online only over at Microsoft. Got a few more Dell devices in there. Piper Tech website is a little slow this morning. Okay, but it is available. Piper Tech are slightly more local shop located in the Montreal region. Last time I checked, we need to uh, see how their physical locations are spread nowadays. Huawei MateBook, yeah, not the um, most performant thing out there. Oh yeah, and keyboard sold separately. So yeah, that thing can get pretty pricey actually for what it does. But yeah, there's no Windows tablet in this price range, so kind of a valid option. Just not the most effective way to spend your money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same model, but this time over at Microsoft. It's almost twice the price too, which makes a little bit of sense. Microsoft, after all, is uh, the manufacturer of this device's main competition, so I bet they're not too eager of, to sell that one. Right, no change at new egg on this laptop. You 
Same here. And I'm doing making good time this morning. Already covered 42% of uh, the device links I need to update this morning. And yeah, you might be wondering why am I checking prices manually when the can I automate that? Well, the fact is I've automated a large portion of that work already. Um, I'm keeping tabs on over 1000 links on Tech Advisor right now. And uh, the robot does most of that. However, every morning I want to, well, make sure that uh, the robot is doing its work properly. So uh, I will at least check on the most popular devices myself. Just make sure there's no mistake in there. I also tend to be a little bit more uh, accurate than the robot. The robot doesn't have access to, uh, let's say, every coupon code or uh, it's not necessarily able to uh, factor in delivery cost or uh, cost, uh, cost of uh, getting things through custom either. So in some cases, the uh, robot doesn't do the trick quite as well. And also, I don't want to only help people that are going to shop online. I try as much as possible to uh, basically keep tabs on what, whatever places people buy computers. And right now, most people do it in retail stores. And by that, I mean brick and mortar locations. So a lot of them are big chains, like let's say Best Buy and stuff like that. And sure, I've got API access for Best Buy, but their API doesn't have Canadian content. So uh, that's kind of out the window. Uh, I've got to do those manually now. And um, yeah, there's just some smaller stores that I want to include and feature as well. Because often the smaller and uh, lo uh, the local stores are going to, um, well, they're a little bit more motivated to uh, keep their clientele happy in some cases. If you, um, how would I say? If you're the kind of people who doesn't feel comfortable with a computer, odds are you're going to be taken care of much better in a smaller store than a big chain. People will take the time to answer your question a little bit more. Although with technology, it's not always clear-cut what a good answer is. Sometimes people come to you with problems that uh, are not related to the device at all. So I always see some comments in there, people not understanding why people in stores can't help them. And sometimes it's, sometimes it's legitimate, sometimes not. Always try to keep an eye on those and keep that in mind when I browse to reviews of a specific store. Because, yeah, uh, one of the things that uh, makes Tech Advisor uh, more, how would I say, reliable source of information of shopping advice and stuff like that is that it starts with a curated list instead of listing everything I can find. And sure, I try to include the uh, door buster deals that uh, retailers have, the uh, devices which are not necessarily good purchases in themselves, but are priced to uh, motivate you to move and 
actually get inside the store where they can tell, uh, sell you something better. So I do review those as well, just to help people uh, actually see what they're going, what they're in for with that. And yeah, most even the very cheap devices out there, they have their use usually. And I try to help people find what they need. But yeah, uh, the curated list basically weeds out some of the uh, devices from manufacturer with uh, shadier practices. And uh, for instance, earlier I was talking about the uh, Amazon Fire HD 8. And yeah, I really wanted to try that one for myself before including it because, well, most of the time, $100 Android tablets are a little bit of a security concern. They often don't have access to a reputable app store to start up with, which the uh, Apple Fire HD has, although there's definitely some limit limitations there. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, usually once they're out, manufacturer don't issue updates for them at all. So you end up with an updated device really quick. And that can expose you to some, um, some of the internet nastier side effects. <laughs> so yeah, Fire HD H Pro, uh, even the smaller one, the seven inch that uh, is sold for $70 in Canada, of course. Um, not a terrible pick. Definitely have plenty of use on that. I definitely use mine pretty much every day. It's a pretty good tablet for watching movies even though it doesn't have the official YouTube app. But the uh, third party one does, at least does the trick. Meets it to what I consider to be a one star rating on compatibility, which is the minimum requirements. It runs, it does everything that you would expect it to. It's just that uh, it's not fully featured. You get the fully featured, you can expect fully featured at three stars in the compatibility, uh, compatibility table, like your YouTube on the Galaxy Tab A. Uh, and five stars is for uncommon, uncommon needs. So, uh, for instance, you wouldn't want a five star rating on, let's say, a game if you wanted to stream it, or uh, if uh, you do very uncommon things like that, like uh, maybe have a dedicated server, or you know, things people don't usually do, or uh if you you're into modding a lot if you loads a lot of mods in your game then yeah you're probably going to be looking at a five star rating there and obviously that doesn't mean that you cannot stream without having the five star rating or anything like that it just means that uh, it's in the optic of buying a new computer so if you don't buy something at that level, that's the kind of stuff you plan to do with it. You kind of start behind the curve already and you will probably end up having to invest into your computer a little faster. If you don't have a five star rating right from the get go. But obviously. Once you uh, already have your computer in hand, you, there's a lot of things you can do to uh, make things work. That's one of the uh, advantages of uh, PC gaming. We don't, we don't really have generations. We can stretch out the life of our devices quite a bit.
It's also why our PCs don't become obsolete the moment Intel release a new chip. When you're playing on console, then if you're an avid gamer, you're probably not going to want to stick on the previous gen for long. Because, yeah, yeah, games are not going to remain available for it for very long after that. All right, I think I can bring that one back from Walmart, but online only. Still 300 for 10 inch tablet, that's not bad. Mm, slight price um, increase on this one over at Newegg. Memory Express still has the better deal by far, even though those are refurbished units. Yeah, it's pretty performant gaming monitor, but um, by gaming monitor standard, it's a little behind in terms of specs and what it's capable of. So let's say paying the three uh, three hundred eighty dollar that Walmart selling it for right now. I don't know. That's not how I would invest my money personally. Refer the refurbished alternative. I might. Mm. Price definitely rise that uh, kind of the computer on that monitor as well by almost one hundred dollar. Well, actually, more than that. And that one's is that one is in store only too. All right, that one is now $1,600 at Best Buy, and that's a certified open box model. So pretty FT price tag there. Yeah, I would expect a much better price for a refurbished model with an NVIDIA 1050 Ti in it. And the Ti suffix on that generation of uh, NVIDIA cards right now that used to be reserved to the enthusiast models which kind of contradict what the 1050 is. But usually the TI cards of that generation have uh, roughly a 10% rise in uh, performance compared to the non-TI version. So actually end up seeing quite a few 1050 TI on the recommended list. They kind of hit that uh, good measure of uh, feature and um, performance for the price. They're pretty cost effective for what they deliver. And considering that uh, there's still a lot of GeForce 900 series laptop going on around. Back in the uh, 900 era, you would see roughly a 40% decrease between the uh, desktop and the laptop model for a smart uh, for a GPU. So yeah, investing a lot of money in the 980M was not a very good investment. Uh, but with the uh, 1000 series, you only see a 10% difference. So um, 
a lot we've got a, a, a lot more options in terms of PC gaming on laptops nowadays. They are much better value than they were even one year ago. Mm -mm -mm. Samsung Galaxy A5. I see a few places still sell it for 400. Not a bad pick. Uh, however, if your interest is mostly in, let's say, a phone with a good camera you, you, and you don't care about apps so much, I often find that the uh, Galaxy S6 is a better choice it's a little bit stronger and it was built to be a premium phone while the a5 is built to be a cheap one so if you don't care about upgrades that much the s6 is uh, actually more capable and has a better camera for roughly the same price but if you're really into apps and that sort of stuff and you're a pretty connected person the A5 is uh, going to remain up to date longer. Just something to keep in mind. Uh, price dropped at. The price dropped at Walmart on that uh, MMO gaming mouse. It's now sixty dollars, and I do have that one. I kind of liked it. It didn't solve what it didn't fill the need I had for that mouse, but still, it's a very comfortable one and. Uh, even though I need to lift my mouse on a pretty regular basis just because I've got five screen laid out around here. Um, so yeah, I have to lift it. <clears throat> uh, it's still definitely doable even though you have so many buttons under your thumb. So yeah, I was a bit skeptical and wanted something bigger that filled my hand a little bit more. And yeah, I found it was a pretty comfortable and um, effective mouse too. But if you're curious right now, I swap regularly between uh, Logitech Proteus mouse. Uh, so it's a tunable a very adjustable mouse actually from Logitech which I definitely recommend it's a very comfortable one um, but the thing is I have to claw grip it and that uh, get tiresome over time especially considering the amount of real estate I have to drag through so uh, what I do to fix that is whenever the uh, sides of my hand are starting to feel a bit sore then i switch to a trackball and in my case it's the um a kensington model so with the track a bigger trackball located in the middle of the unit and um yeah i did a bit of gaming on it and it can be done but uh yeah the mouse is a little bit better but yeah, the scroll ring, I really, really like. And um, that basically gives a rest to my um, thumb and pinky finger and my hand's not spending so much time compressed. So instead I mostly use my uh, index and, uh, index and uh, second finger. Ah oh, yeah, index and middle finger uh to uh use the ball and uh, when that gets sore well then i switch back to the proteus but then again hopefully you don't have to spend as much time as a computer as i do 
it's not the best thing for your health. All right, that one is still out of stock over at Microsoft. It's been 21 days, so it's been a little while. Probably won't see it again. All right, and the B&H entry here. And even though B&H has no presence in Canada, they make a special effort to cater to us over on their website. So I like to include them into the um, list of suppliers I, uh, I cover, especially when things are priced in the bracket that qualifies for free shipping even in Canada. But that's also the reason why I, they are listed as an online retailer on techadvisor.ca instead of, well, recognizing that they have physical brick and mortar locations too. A few gaming mouse, no change at new egg on this one. Definitely priced higher than what it was last time recommended that one. And no change at Canada computer either. And yeah, I'm at 53%. Seems like I slowed down a little bit there. I'll try to catch up speed a little bit. Ideally, I like to be done by a quarter to 11 or something like that. And I can jump quickly to uh, the newsletter with a full data set. But if I don't, it's not the end of the world. I always start my um, morning updates with what is probably the most pertinent stuff. So things like places where I expect price drops from and popular listing. After that, I go through stuff that I recommended recently, and after that, it's everything else. So lower value items, let's say, on uh, in my database. That way, if I don't cover everything by the time I issue the newsletter, it's it's not the end of the world. All right. that keyboard and mouse set especially for that price it's uh, definitely worth considering if especially if you're currently playing on a laptop and something like that gives you a chance to uh, you know have a desk somewhere with uh, maybe a laptop riser and that way you can use uh, an actual mouse and a full-size keyboard so that you have a more comfortable experience. That's definitely something I would recommend if you usually play for more than, let's say, 30 minutes on the same device. Because, yeah, after 30 minutes on a laptop, especially if you play it on your lap, uh, not the best for your buddy. <laughs> Can be a, it can definitely start straining your uh, your neck and uh, even your hand, especially if you're using a trackpad. A few gamers are really good with trackpad, but uh, yeah, it's just it's just a matter of how long you keep it up. 
and find it really hard to have fun in a game when you're physically in pain doing it. So instead of investing in a graphics card or something like that, sometimes it's worth considering investing into something that will make the experience more comfortable. Like a nice chair, a laptop riser, a keyboard and mouse. And some of those things are pretty cheap too. The $35 set I presented earlier has got really good reviews on it, especially for a set this price. So if you're not sure if it's worth the investment yet, you don't need to invest into a $200 keyboard with a $100 plus mouse. $35 to start just to see if you like it. It's a reasonable investment, I feel. Um, for the uh, laptop riser, I've got one from Amazon upstairs that does a pretty good job. And uh, even IKEA makes $5 risers that are pretty decent too. I wouldn't invest much more than that in the laptop riser, to be honest. Personally, would not invest into one with fans and stuff like that. Uh, some kind of airflow is nice, especially if you've got vents at the bottom of your laptop. But the thing with uh, cooling fans in a laptop pad, that it's going to put extra strain on your um, power supply, which in terms rise the heat of it. So um, yeah. I go passive cooling before I go active, personally. Maybe the fans would be better if you plug it on, a, let's say, a USB, a USB charger for a smartphone or maybe even a USB hub. Those, uh, those often have a, a power connection as well. That way, at least you don't put the strain on your laptop itself that you're trying to cool you know now of course those only help if your laptop's got vents at the bottom if the bottom of your uh, of your laptop is a uh, solid surface uh, putting uh, aiming a fan at it is not going to help anything Okay, there's next. Yeah, it's available at HP, and there's a coupon for five percent off. So let's add that in there. Yeah, eight hundred dollar for that. That's a pretty good deal. Although I see Best Buy and Newegg already got that price beat. But they're refurbished while this one is a new model. Not, if we, not everyone's going to be comfortable with a refurbished device. Which makes sense. Uh, $65 for this joystick set. I have quite a bit of experience with uh, the ancestors from that same line of joystick. I actually liked it quite a lot while I was uh, testing flight sim back in the day. That was uh, faster to set up between builds than the uh, the nicer sturdier joystick and throttle set because that one is a, a single device don't have as many buttons to set up either all right sorry about that i'll be right back
All right, sorry about that, everybody. My uh, sound setup's not really calibrated for the dogs. <laughs> yes, you too. Yeah, that was the delivery I was mentioning earlier. Get that out of the way. Should have more of those now. Fingers crossed. And yeah, Newegg selling a, wire, a refurbished version of that uh, wireless keyboard and mouse set. It's factory refurbished, so um, should be a little. It should be fairly thoroughly cleaned, you know, if you know what I mean. Um, Getting used uh, keyboard and mouse sometimes can be a little bit, well, disgusting, you know. Uh, you don't know where they've been or how they've been treated before. Uh, when they get factory refurbished, at least I kind of expect that uh, they will actually open them up and uh, clean them properly. So you don't necessarily inherit whatever the previous owner's secretion were. Uh, sorry, bad choice of words. All right, 80 bucks on rival at new egg so no change there actually the price is so high doesn't even show on the uh, list there i'm the one up sure that ebay price is actually representative it's the price that i'm pretty sure of it's the um not sure what the um, delivery cost and the uh, import charges are on it. Sometimes, especially on lower priced items, importing them is not always worth it. All right, Galaxy S7. All right, no longer available over at Bell. We'll see if somebody else still carries it. But yeah, I find that since the S9 came out, the um, S8 is starting, is starting to uh, be pretty um, attractive price-wise. And considering that uh, performance and battery life between the S8 and S9 are very, very similar, um, upgrading to the S9 is, uh, well, it's mostly worth it if you're into that camera. That camera looks pretty, pretty good. But let's face it, the S8 camera was not bad either. Uh, it was one of the best of... Uh, one of the best on the market when it came out. So, uh, one year apart, yeah. Not a bad choice at all. No change there. Slide drop on this one over at Newegg. Nothing major, but still. Five bucks more in your pockets, not bad. Let's 
Yeah, and those are THX certified. So if you want something a little, still a 2.1 uh, system, so stereo plus subwoofer, as you see from the picture. Um, but it should deliver a slightly more impressive soundscape. Price came up a little bit on this one over at Canada Computers. So closer to what uh, Tiger Direct was selling it before. And yeah, another factory refurbished set of uh, Logitech goodies at over at Newegg. 30 bucks for a pair of speakers, not bad, especially one with subwoofer. And given that those are recertified, well, it's worth considering in my opinion. That arrow is seems to be out of stock for the most part, at least. Out of stock there, too. All right, so no change. This is stable there too. $30 discount on this at Canada Computer. Which brings it in line with uh, London Drugs, Amazon, and Walmart. Really interesting. The price came up on the uh, iPhone 7 at Telus. Not sure why at this point. Because, yeah, the iPhone 7 has been out for quite a while now. Oh, and if you were curious, Here's the trackball model I'm using. Was pretty surprised. I wasn't expecting to uh, like the trackball experience so much. And I wanted one that would be uh, using with the middle of my hand more as I, yeah, the, mo the whole reason why I use a trackball from time to time is just to uh, get relief from the cramps I get from having a claw grip on a mouse. And even though I've got a really good mouse here, it's just with the amount of time I spend on the computer, sometimes I have to, uh, well, you know, take care of myself and uh, try to not hurt myself more than I need to. So uh, just using a different part of the hand for a few days every once in a while that uh, I found that that did alleviate quite a bit of pain for me. Uh, 
All right, iPhone 8 Plus, no change there. Oops, sorry about that. It's pretty nice with the camera vignette I got. I managed to uh, keep the microphone out of the frame, but uh, yeah, it's a little close still. It's on the side, so I don't uh, generate a massive amount of plosives. Kind of helps filtering out the uh, noise from the computer as well. Yeah, I've got five monitors spread across three computers in here, uh, all used with a single set of keyboard and mouse. Setup of that is a tiny bit tricky. So it's not necessarily something I recommend for everybody to do, but uh, that also means that whenever I record this, I've got a fair amount of uh, airflow going on around. And yeah, I definitely always have to worry at least a little bit about um, heat generation in this room. No change on this offer. Nearing the 65% point on the amount of work I've got to do this morning. It's almost 10 o'clock. So I should get fairly close to reaching 100% this morning. Definitely hope so. And yeah, that's the Porteous mouse I'm using currently. Strongly recommended. Uh, the one glitch I have with it is how sometimes the um, scroll wheels, when it's in free mode, flickers. Which is strange, it's not something I had with my um, previous free rolling Logitech... Um, mouse so i'm um, not sure where it comes from exactly uh, but uh, yeah in games it's great and uh, it's a very versatile mouse it was one of the big factor for me originally i wanted something i could use for browsing and gaming and yeah the um, it's got a convenient button switch between free rolling and rolling in notches. So it works really, really well in games and when I have to scroll through long document and web pages and stuff like that, I can put in free mode and just flick the wheel and let it roll by itself for a while. Which is a huge plus for what I do. Online only on this trident, which means no change. Yeah, not a bad computer for the uh, media center, or even if you want something you can bring to a LAN party fairly easily in the backpack without necessarily going for something that you cannot upgrade, like a laptop, for instance. However, the um, changing the GPU in the Trident is not the easiest thing. You're kind of limited with the uh, kind of card size you can put in there. So it's possible to upgrade those. But uh, yeah, it's not necessarily something most people would want to tackle. And also, if you've got any question, you've got uh, shopping plans for the weekend and maybe you want some 
suggestion or would like my opinion on something you were thinking of buying for yourself, by all means, let me know in the chat. Okay, price definitely came up on this Dell. Yeah, I had a pretty big rebate on it for a while. Made it pretty attractive. But yeah, it's back to um, to a price I wouldn't necessarily recommend for something of that uh, performance level. There's definitely better out there at the moment. Right, and a few prices to check on the uh, Microsoft Surface Studio. Very attractive all in one, but so expensive. Wish I look. Always funny to see corgis roll around. <laughs> it's one of the things I've noticed since I've started streaming. They're pretty curious. They're like, dude, who are you talking to? Look like this laptop is back in stock over at Microsoft, but online only for the time being at least. No change there. Yeah, one thing that has been going through my mind this last few days is uh, I'd be curious to try a Chromebook, Chrome OS based tablet sometime. Just wonder if I can f find something with um, the kind of price I need for an uh, with a 1080p screen on it because of the amount of multitasking I do. Wonder if I could find that uh, preview before I got my Chromebook. Most NEDP model I found were in the five hundred dollar range, and I get why they are they are priced like that. But uh, the thing is that put them in direct competition with uh, fully featured Windows machines. And every once in a while, maybe twice a year, you can find pretty decent Windows laptop with a 1080p screen for, I'd say, roughly $500. So if you're as patient as I am, uh, you can actually um, beat those Chromebook prices fairly easily. But yeah, I ended up getting mine for $300 refurbished online. And Chrome OS kind of nice on um, 
simply because it doesn't how would I say there's so little configuration to be done on those and it's so easy to wipe them out between owners that yeah makes the refurbished option a lot more attractive than uh, even let's say a windows uh, windows device and yeah so far it's it's worked pretty well i had to wipe it recently because it would uh, freeze every once in a while here sherlock you're rolling all over the place you itchy Yeah, I know. So yeah, I had to wipe it recently, but um, that seems to have fixed the issue. So uh, we'll see. one of the nice things about Chrome OS is that uh, because of the way it's built it's much harder for manufacturers to bundle crapware with it so even with uh, manufacturers who usually indulge in that practice I usually feel uh, comfortable recommending the Chromebooks because, well, they can't do bundling there. And those bundle apps are definitely not a good thing for you. MacBook Pro 15 inch. Yeah, they're interesting as mobile editing platform for creatives and stuff like that. But, uh, and they have decent battery life for what they are. If you were to buy something uh, that runs Windows to do that kind of work, you could actually get something much cheaper but you probably wouldn't get battery life would probably be a bigger ticker device too so it wouldn't be as easy to carry around would probably look like a gamer device too which is not necessarily appropriate to bring with you in a meeting let's say you're a graphic designer or something like that and you have to do a presentation you have to keep that in mind those big bold polygonal design that gaming device tends to have nowadays um, they don't necessarily look classy that's the thing so yeah bringing a gaming laptop in a meeting versus bringing a macbook pro in a meeting usually macbook pro is going to look a little bit more professional you know so yeah if you found those things overpriced and a ripoff or that kind of stuff here's who the market is <laughs> I've got a price drop a new egg on that laptop. Always good to have options. It's a little pricey for something with only 8 gigs of memory, however. And the 750 gigs hard drive, that's that's a weird combination. Probably won't be my recommendation in the um newsletter in a, in an hour or two just a gut feeling like that a 
right. And yeah, if your laptop doesn't come with a DVD built in or anything like that, good news is it's easy enough to just plug one in. That way you don't have to uh, deal with the extra weight and um, battery draining effect that uh, inbuilt DVD would have and still be able to uh, access your optical media. Can even rip the uh, rip your DVDs if you want to watch them while you're on the go. Remember quite a few people back in the day got laptop partly because of that. Of course that goes back to uh, the days where I worked for the university and uh, some professors had allowances for computers. So yeah, they basically wanted the device that would do a little bit of everything and uh, they liked the idea of a portable DVD player. In some case, maybe a little more than a computer. <laughs> And it was always a little tricky to uh, convince them that, uh, yeah, you don't need to carry your DVD player with you all the time. You can even bring a few of your movies on just, just ripped out on your hard drive. Ripping your DVDs for personal use is, for, is perfectly legal. A $10 price drop on this monitor over at Newegg. We'll take that. All right, 224. little bit higher than the typical price so far in this monitor's monitor's history kind of the computer is right on the normal line there oh yeah Edifier bookshelf speakers. Those look pretty good, I find. One would be curious to try them out. Although I don't have a lot of... Uh, sp I wouldn't have a lot of space to put them right now. Got my current set of speakers strapped to uh, monitor arms up there. They're not even directly aimed at me, they're behind a screen. Still did the trick for me, but yeah, it's not the best practice in terms if um, you're going after sound quality. I'm just not very picky on sound quality, to be honest. But that's me. Right, Google Pixel to Excel. A regular price over at Google. Every once in a while, Google has price drop on those, and uh, can be a pretty good time to grab a phone. Pixels don't always fare so well with my with the tech advisor algorithm for value and such. 
but um, yeah, I know tech reviewers like them quite a bit. LG V30. That one reviewed fairly well too. Price is just slightly lower. Doesn't usually make the recommended list. Usually recommend older models too. Smartphone, uh, smartphone tech kind of plateaued recently. Well, last year. So we're just starting to see new stuff after a year and a half, maybe even two years of everyone using the exact same hardware, or pretty much. So these days, it's pretty much down to. Uh, fashion and camera quality. Because yeah, at this point, we can pretty much consider the smartphone a fashion item on top of, you know, being a smart device. It's used and reviewed in similar fashion. Mm, that one, all right, available online only from Microbytes. All right, no change there. Mm, reaching 78% of the amount of work I need to do. Uh, so, whichever point I reach first, 100% or 1045 on the clock, here is when I'm going to go away. So, in the meantime, if you've got any, any questions uh, or maybe you had uh, something in mind that you want, you were planning to maybe buy this weekend and you w would like my opinion on it, by all means, let me know in the chat. Small price ring, a rise on the sculpt comfort here. That one got up quite a bit, ten bucks. So the Apple MacBook Air, let's see, out of stock at Newegg still, has been out of stock there for 25 days now. Same here. No change there. Mm, here again, where Aurora. Usually that line is worth considering if uh, you need a gaming computer now and would rather buy it uh, factory build than uh, custom build. And there's a few reasons to go for something that's built in the factory rather than buying it from your uh, local computer shop. Um, usually the factory built systems 
get a little bit more of uh, compatibility testing. And uh, the motivation is not necessarily to give you a better product. Um, the main reason they do that is to uh, keep their manufacturing cost low. And they don't want to spend a lot of money on support afterwards. So, um, yeah, you benefit from, yeah, the hardware that's in it is the cheapest available things that will do the job and um, will pretty reasonably not give you a grief or anything like that. Obviously, there's always the lemons. Uh, but... That little bit of testing sometimes can result in a pretty stable device for not a lot of cost. The main difference you will notice between the factory built system and one that is custom built is that uh, you will see it in two, in two components mainly. You're going to see a difference in the power supply and the motherboard. And uh, manufacturers will skimp out of those two components mostly. And yeah, Wi Fi is also another area. Uh, so usually the factory built one will have some kind of Wi Fi in it, even on a desktop system. Um... I'll just complete that real quick. Yeah, that one's now in stores only. Right, that's what I had. All right. So, yeah, you will have Wi-Fi in the desktop built in factory because that item looks good on the box. A lot of people live in apartments and stuff like that. And uh, a lot of people don't necessarily realize that uh, not having Wi-Fi on a desktop, well, it's not the most performant thing to start with. And then the second thing is, if you don't have it built in, it's a 30 bucks dongle to add to your computer. It's anyone can solve that issue. You really don't need it as a part of the system to start up with. But it looks good on the box. It's good. It's a good investment in marketing. Uh, so that's one of the things you will see in the factory built system, but often not in um, custom built one. Uh, and then you will see the power supply is almost always smaller and sometimes much smaller in capacity in a factory built system. So that can prevent a little bit of upgrading in the future, but uh, usually from generation to generation, one of the main thing that improves with new chipset is that they take less power because the push is towards laptop. That's where most of the uh, money is made for hardware manufacturers these days. So when you buy a desktop computer, the benefit you get is that as time goes, you'll need a smaller and smaller power supply. So no biggie there, um, unless you plan of massively upgrading. Uh, the other difference you will see is uh, the motherboard is going to have a lot less expansion options. So fewer ports for memory or cards or anything like that. And if you're an enthusiast, it's going to sting. But uh, for most people, you're not going to use those ports ever. The uh, most tangible scenario where that wouldn't make a difference would be, let's say, with memory. Let's say you start with uh, 8 gigs of RAM now and you would want to upgrade to 16 gigs in the future. So you're probably only going to have two ports in there instead of the standard four, which means that in order to upgrade, you'll need to basically take out the RAM that's currently there put it in trash and replace it with a new one. 
if you had a custom build system, you would probably have four ports in there. And you could just add two extra stick of memories in there and uh, spend quite a bit less and not get rid of your current memory. But really, that's the main compromise here. It's not a big deal. You maybe save... You save a small amount of money there. Not a big one. So in the end, for most people, the factory build system is fine. All the uh, cost-cutting measures are not going to affect your experience that much. But if you want something that... If you want to be able to do upgrades, especially if you want to do them yourself, a custom-built one is much easier because it's all made of standard stuff. You're going to have a full-size case to work in, so you don't have to go in small cram corners and all that kind of stuff. And much nicer to work with. Uh, but if you're not going to do upgrades, especially if you're not going to do them yourself, a factory build system is fine. All right. Got to go for a quick bio break and I'll be right back. I'll leave you with slides of uh, recommended picks for different user archetypes.
All right, and I'm back. Let's finish this thing. I'm at 84% and it's almost 10 and a half here. So nearing the end of the stream. And once again, if you've got in question or would want my opinion on, on something, let me know. I will looks like I'll be able to pull off a full update today. Which is definitely what I prefer to do. That way my newsletter has uh, all the data it could possibly benefit from. Even though as I go through this list, it becomes less and less likely that I, that I will find something worth reporting about. But you know, just in case, sometimes there we have nice surprises in life sometimes. Another self of bookshelf speakers. Thousand on yeah, XPS thirteen. Yeah, and that's one thing, one trend I definitely observe more these days. It's becoming more common for the i price laptops to be characterized not necessarily by their power, but rather by their um uh, battery endurance. So yeah, for people that uh, basically don't have much opportunity to recharge their laptop during the day and can't necessarily rely on a power outlet being present, those are pretty expensive laptops, especially if you need something powerful enough to, uh, you know, do a typical road warrior stuff so uh pretty intensive word excel or uh, you know working with crms and uh stuff like that so yeah representatives and uh, people like that we need to let's say draft a quote on the go and stuff like that um then you would invest quite a bit more in a laptop um could also I can also think of uh, realtors in that area. People who would really want to invest in uh, an expensive laptop, but not necessarily a very powerful one. Because for some of us, battery endurance is the top priority. So no change on that one. For those of us who still use optical drives on a regular basis, I used to, especially with uh, Windows install disk and stuff like that, but um, even that, I've switched mostly to USB keys in my case. I don't even think I, I took, uh, I got a Blu-ray player ever for my uh, TVs. Kind of skip 
that and went direct to uh, digital delivery instead. So that one's out of stock. No big deal there. 80 bucks on this Cooler Master set. I guess it's if you want the RGB lighting. Not where I would invest my money personally, but... Um, I can kind of understand people wanting to have uh, color matching in all their components. But that's the main attraction I found to uh, RGB components personally. Before, whenever you wanted that, you kind of had to... Uh, commit to a brand and even then uh, a product line within that brand sometimes. So RGB makes it easier to pick and choose. Which makes me wonder why manufacturer push it as that much actually. You'd think that wanting to uh, have a uniform look would uh, kind of force people to uh, stick by your brand, you know? Because, yeah, it was pretty common for a while to see a gaming station set up with all green stuff for, you know, Razer fans. Would even get the... Uh, Wallpaper to match. But yeah, it's one less tool for them to prevent them from going to your, uh, to the next competitor, you know? All right, Galaxy S9. Better design than the S8 overall. The uh, fingerprint scanner location is more convenient on that one. And But yeah, the big attraction is that camera. So if you're huge into um, mobile photography, might be a thing you might be interested in to, uh, investing into. The plus model has a dual camera set up on it. The uh, non plus one is uh, just adapts the iris on that one camera. So for full effect, you would go for the S9 Plus. Especially if you like portrait mode, which blurs the background behind the subject. That'd be the main reason to, um, that'd be another big reason to get uh, the S9 Plus. Battery life is another factor. It's a little bit better. All right, 91%, almost there. Uh, so, HP Omen, pretty serious rig there, and let's see, I'll apply the additional 5% rebate you can get from that coupon up there. Yeah, still a bit pricey, especially for what's in it. It's a 1080 though. You got your GTX 1080. 
if you absolutely want the absolute top tier you can to do it under twenty five hundred dollars <throat> You're getting into bragging rights a little bit at that point. Personally, what I would do would be to uh, probably get a 1070 des desk generation. And then if I really want to treat myself as next generation, I would get an 1180. Or whatever the name is going to be then. Let's see, made a mistake there. Yeah, that one's out of stock at eBay. And 2300 on XPS 13. Online, but not in stores at Microsoft. which is probably the place where I go buy most of my laptops these days. There's a store not too far from here and uh, yeah, when Microsoft stores start issuing rebates, they really go all out. So yeah. To uh, get good prices on laptop, it's a pretty good place to go. And uh, I like that they tend to sell um, signature edition of laptop. So you don't get as much of the uh, crapware that gets bundled with uh, new laptop nowadays. So you don't, so your new laptop doesn't start right off the bat with a lot of software that uh, you really should uninstall in order to gain a little bit of productivity back. Uh, productivity, performance, sorry. <laughs> uh, so that one's in store and online. A little pricey, but that's a pretty yeah that's a pretty capable device there for something that small and uh <clears throat> yeah that thin Walmart still got those tablets, but it's online only at this point. But something I notice with Walmart these days, they are uh, products often and their quote unquote shelf life on the store, uh, the website, sorry. Devices disappear from the brick and mortar location shelves, but uh, you can still get them online. Often a, pr a pretty good price, too. All right, no change there. Ninety three percent, but it's ten forty one getting close. And that one is pretty much effectively out of stock. It's available from only one or two location that smaller computer retailer we have. Mm -mm -mm. 
So sixteen hundred online. Yeah, online only. Over at Microsoft. All right, so that one's available online and in stores. Hmm, pretty um, capable too, from what I'm seeing. A nice set of hot ass. Uh, always worried of pronouncing that wrong. <laughs> uh, but yeah, really nice set of uh, joystick and throttle. Uh, Still sold at Walmart, although they're the uh, priciest on that list right now. All right, 700 for the S3 at Walmart and uh, Oh, yeah, it's one of those where you have to pick the color to see the price and where it's available from. All right, this one is available online only. All right. Yep, yeah, no change on this one. Still not available at New Egg. And same here. Mm, all right, that one's gone from inventory as well. No change there. And still out of stock. Over at Staples, anyway. I see other places still carry that laptop. Uh, the G13 here is out of stock as well. Looks like I mostly missed the boat on that one. I was kind of hoping to get one, especially with that uh, analog thumbstick that uh, keypad has. Should have got, uh, gotten it last uh, holiday season like uh, Joker did. I right, still out of stock here. Starting to go faster than my slideshow, it looks. Maybe I should shorten the delay a little bit, but I don't know. It's probably a little fast already. Don't want to make that too hard to read. All right, so I managed to get 97% of the work done. Not bad, especially since most of what I have left to do here is stuff that I highly suspect is out of stock anyway. So I'll close that there and compile my historic data. And after that, I'll be able to basically identify which user archetype is most favored today. And I feel that's one of the things that Tech Advisor does fairly well. <coughs> Tech Advisor, the site, obviously. <laughs> Um, it's because it mostly works based on um, 
pricing history rather than going by MSRP or anything like that able to identify periods where a specific kind of person would actually pay less or more than usual given what the option given the option on the market at that point so i feel that that's that should be pretty useful right it's not necessarily something that uh, people google for very often but um, I feel that's a pretty useful feature. And yeah, I'm looking at a pro progress bar right now. Which is one of the reasons why I'm not sharing my screen like a lot of people would, but rather have that uh, display behind me. You would just be looking at a bunch of uh, progress bar and uh, websites loading and all that kind of stuff. I uh, prefer uh, showing data instead. So that you have something that uh, kind of support. You're able to follow what I'm looking at at the moment. But uh, yeah, looking at what I'm looking, it wouldn't be the most interesting thing out there. All right. So I got everything compiled. I will load the stats just for my curiosity. See where the uh, average price of tech is at. Yeah. So pricing today is very not. We're, we're definitely much higher than we were last time last year. So this year, the today, the average price of tech is uh, almost thirteen hundred dollars. Last year, at the same date, it was. Uh, Eleven hundred seventy-seven dollar gives you a point of comparison there. Uh, but yeah, last year was a very good year. We're all always two thousand seventeen was always beating two thousand sixteen in prices, pretty much. So we've got a little bit of a price rise this year. And if I go to the home page. Right, and I have to go in interact mode. Favorite archetypes for today. Uh, so we've got the uh, aspiring creative looking for a stationary computer, uh, saving potentially one hundred fifty six dollars. Mm, dollar given current sales uh, the uh, serious video editor could save $130 on a stationary computer currently the Mac user shopping for a laptop could save $103 the multitasker shopping for a stationary computer could save $100 in the current market the uh, serious multitasker could save potentially $97. The serious gamer shopping for a laptop could save $91 right now. So uh, that's it for now. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for uh, coming to watch and um, interacting in the chat and all that. Uh, I'll be uh, jumping into the task of assembling the newsletter for today and later this afternoon I will have the tech word buying uh, video uh, report so stay tuned for that and thank you very much everybody again bye bye